Hello again. This is a quick one to talk about railings as 3D grids instead of, well, the 2D grids that we can't see in 3D views. Uh, common practice these days is to create some sort of 3D representation of them for uh, use in Navisworks for uh, clash detection, etc. Or at least to help you visualize the building and see where grids and know what you know what grid you're on when you're walking through a place. Um, the traditional sort of quick and dirty way is just to export grids at each level as a CAD file, then reference them or send them in as an uh, uh, reference them back into your project, perhaps, and or then export them out to NWC or DWG files for use in Navisworks. In this case, I've taken a railing. Uh, the trick here is that you have to have a baluster family first of all, and a baluster type for each of the kinds that you want to use. I've got two baluster stand. So I have a family that has 3D text and extrusion for a stand. And this is based on a Revit formed conversation and uh, one of the guys there, Aaron, posted an example of something they were using as a line based family. And then the other version is a baluster stand. Oh, I saved the family as something else. So um, if I go back to the project I can take this one here, edit, and you can see we've just got a couple 2D elements here, or 3D elements with uh, a parameter set up to govern the 3D text value. Uh, so if I close that, and if I close my hidden windows, then if we look at the properties of these grids, the railings here, there's a railing type for each grid configuration. So grid 1 has railing structure of this little 4 inch high sort of kick plate, if you will, something for us to trip over in the project. And then the balusters are assigned according to each type. And I just have to make sure that my grid 1 is grid baluster 1 at the start and stop, or start and end, and at the regular spacing. Then you just define what kind of spacing you'd like them to show up so that you get a repetitive layout. The cool thing about railings in this case is that they tolerate curves very nicely. So this is a curved grid, which you can create in Revit as well, but you just can't do a 3D one. And creating a line-based family that can tolerate a curve is a little harder because you have to deal with tr trigonometry and or defining an arc, and it's just not as simple to lay out, perhaps. This doesn't require any formulas, just assigning certain things to certain types. Um, I think that's pretty obvious or pretty simple. Just a matter of creating a 3D geometry in a baluster family and then applying it to your railing type. Uh, and the other little tip would be I tend to prefer to put this in a separate project file using copy monitor. So I'll take the structural grid or the architectural grid, whichever is the primary uh, governing grid, and then import or uh, insert that into a new project file that's just going to have 3D grids place these at every level of the project and uh, once I do the first level or whatever I can copy them up and only have to change the ones that vary as you rise in the building or go below grade and <clears throat> then this separate file using copy monitor can watch the grids in the governing one so all I have to do is come back and check this thing every once in a while and make sure it's still synced up with the original gri governing grids make some changes to these if necessary and save it if I export it, ultimately, to NWC, then I can send this NWC grid file off along with my other project files, and everybody can have a 3D grid in their Navisworks collaboration mode. Well, hope it helps.